gorgeous friends. So it is my second full day here. I'm looking highly intellectual in my blue light glasses. I'm a big fan of making sure I don't get too much blue light from a laptop. And I normally have this thing called Flux, but for Christmas, I received these gorgeous blue light glasses. So yay. Today I attempted to do some work. Um, I really struggled to get out of bed this morning. I think I got out of bed at like 9, 30, 10, which is the middle of the night in Berlin. So I was like, get yourself up, Jade, just do it. I had a breakfast. There was cereal for once, which was a lovely surprise. My stomach has still been growling most of this afternoon because I clearly just eat a lot more than they give me here. I went into my porridge stash and had a sad bowl of watery porridge, <laughs> but it's keeping me going. I've used this one tea bag today like 10 times to the point where I was just drinking hot water and calling it tea, but I'm okay. I'm living my life, I'm vibing, we're okay. I did some exercise because I think it's the only thing that gives me endorphins right now. I did a half hour Latin dance workout and I remembered how tragically uncoordinated I am. Like, I'm a fan of myself, I love myself, but I am very realistic that I cannot dance. <laughs> it doesn't stop me doing it, but I just don't look great. <laughs> then I did this writing project and I proudly wrote 2000 words, which is honestly for a slumpy day like today, I'm pretty proud. <laughs> I first started learning Korean like six months ago and then I completely lost the habit, lost the motivation. Um, I learned Hangul, which is the lettering. I don't know if you know that much about the Korean language, but I think it's one of the most genius languages ever to exist. It's so clever. Just to give you a brief history, from what I remember, um, there was a king, Sejong, I think in like 15th, 16th century or something like that. At the time, Korea didn't have a written system, so people had to learn Chinese characters. And for poorer communities who never learned to read or write, that was really difficult because Chinese characters are quite complex. So the king went to his scholars and he's like, hey, I need you to design me a language that anyone can learn. Like it needs to be a language that anyone can read or write really easily. And so the scholars went away and designed Hangul, Korean. So even if the characters look complex because you've never studied Korean before, you could probably learn them in like one afternoon. Like they're very intuitive. Yeah, so because I started studying the language a while ago, I feel like I have a very basic understanding of sentence structure, like how it works. But then I kind of lost it all. So I'm trying to get it back. I'm using Talk To Me In Korean, which is a really good podcast. Uh, and they have like PDFs on their website. Today I learned how to say I want which is go si po yo, go, go si po yo, go si po yo. For example, if I want to say, um, I want to eat, I would say, mo go si po yo, kimchi mo go si po yo. Or I want to drink, mashi da go si po yo, mul ye yo, mul mashi da go si po yo, mo ha go si po yo. And I have my little book of Korean where I just write things down and try and test myself. Am I gonna be anywhere near fluent? Absolutely not. Am I gonna be anywhere near conversational? Probably not. But when I was able to translate the shampoo bottle where it said shampoo and I could read the hangle, that was a proud moment. And now I've just spent the last two hours reading about North Korea. I read an amazing book by Yongmi Park. I'm now reading this really interesting article about uh, elderly people in South Korea and how most elderly people actually live in poverty, which is very surprising. They have the worst senior poverty rate among all developed nations. And I know when you think of South Korea, you think, developed nation, technology, forward thinking, and yet they don't seem to support the elderly that much. And then Confucianism, which is like a traditional Eastern philosophy that's followed by a lot of Eastern countries. Confucianism is big on like family values and hierarchy based on age, but the traditional Confucian traditions seem to be fading more in South Korea, as this article says. I just received dinner. Should we have a look what it is? While I'm eating my dinner, I'm gonna watch this video about black people in Korea. I've been reading a lot of articles about the beauty industry here, the prominence of the plastic surgery industry, how skin lightening is huge, how people really want that like white glassy skin look. And so I'm really interested how that then plays into racism. So yeah, I'm gonna watch some videos. 
let's have a look what food I've got. So I'm not wearing trousers, so I don't expose myself. Oh, and guess what? So there's me trying to finally get off my phone, get off social media, Jade, come on. My phone buzzes at me after two hours and my government app is like, are you still in quarantine? Have you left the room? Because your phone has been inactive for two hours. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I have to go on my phone every hour just so that they know I'm still in this room? Ooh. Here we have, I think this is soup. Ooh, a soup that doesn't look creamy or milky. Love that. That's amazing. It's got like a cucumber in it, so refreshing. Mm. We've got rice, of course. Um, <gasps> tofu! Yay! Oh, hi. Fascinating. I think, is this like seaweed? And cabbage. Something I don't know what it is. And kimchi. Let's do an unboxing. Whoa. What is this? I do know what this is. Pickled something. Don't know what this is. It's some kind of cabbage. It looks good. But this is the star of the show. Give me protein after my exercise. <laughs> This could be anything. It could be anything, you know. We've got some green. Don't know what these lumps are gonna be, but I'm very intrigued. This is gonna be an exciting meal. Another good meal. Cheers to food, the highlight of the day. <laughs> oh, also, really quickly, because I talked about this on Instagram, and I just think it's a worthy topic. In one of my moments of procrastination today, I was watching back old videos of myself, and normally I avoid those at all costs. I just don't wanna see it. We, we move on, we grow. <laughs> but it was strangely inspiring to me. Because, I don't know, I was just kind of cute and awkward. And I have come such a long way in terms of just personal confidence. I've been talking to a camera, just, just generally kind of more confident. And I look back and I'm like, whoa, Jade, your perspective back then on grades, for example, like you have come such a long way. And that got me thinking, you know, being raised as a woman into this world where you're kind of trained to have insecurities because industries can profit off of those insecurities. They can prey on them. They can say, great, you're insecure and I've got a product that's gonna sort that insecurity, buy it. And also how women are kind of trained to be smaller and palatable and, and you know, pleasing and, and just nice. I feel like I've spent so much of my life just trying to be nice and likable and I still am like that. But I think I have come away since that time in terms of, being more unapologetic, slightly, in being me. And it also just really reminded me how much I love it when people are just unapologetically themselves. So this is just a reminder that I think you are cool exactly as you are. And also that even if you haven't realized it, you probably have grown and come such a long way in the last few years. And because it's so intangible, you won't have even noticed that you have. That's all I wanna say. You're cool, we're cool, we're all growing out here. Um, and yeah, now I'm starving, so let's go eat. I am going down such a rabbit hole and I have no regrets. Why have I never watched BTS interviews? These guys are amazing. I'm gonna become an army. I am heading to sleep, but I'm sending you so much love. Um, if you are in lockdown or quarantine, I guess my challenge for you today is to learn another language or to research a random culture in the world, to pick somewhere and be like, 
I'm just gonna learn about them today. I just wanna say, I know nothing. Everything I've said in this video is, is literally me like starting to scratch the surface of like a culture and like issues here. And there's, I have so much, so much to learn. I find it really interesting. Um, and I'm also reading this book called The History of Bees, which is just a random fiction book and makes me feel like I'm not just in a room. I have really miss reading fiction and just living an adventure. Thank you so much for watching and I'm sending you love wherever you are in the world. Bye.